Phoebe, little uh, Benjamin. We praise God for that. She's doing well and expect to be home tomorrow. We praise God for her and for her, the delivery God gave her and for the health that she has. Um, keep in mind, please, we have a special baptism, the 2nd of September, which is the first Friday in September. Uh, Sister Ivet, oh, no, Nivat from the Arabic Church will be giving her testimony. And will actually gave her testimony already and be getting baptised. So um, that will be a combined service then. Also, we have in uh, uh, September 10, there will be volleyball, volleyball rally. And straight after that, the, the uh, MBF meetings are coming very, very quickly. So please keep those in prayer. Uh, just one more thing. We have um, Pastor Owens passed away. He went to be with the Lord just yesterday. And uh, the, uh, the condolences on tomorrow night, 6 to 9 p.m., if you wish to attend, in Punchbowl. They don't know anything about the funeral at this point. Um, so just uh, praise God for him. He's well into his 90s, nearly 100 if he hadn't got there already. And a faithful man from beginning to end. So he's a wonderful example to us all. Just update on the renovations. Uh, everything's going smoothly. You notice that some of the uh, feature wall over here is presented. We tend to have rockeries over there and over here to balance the whole thing off. They're still coming up. And the stage area most likely could be the carpet or, uh, or polished boards. We're not too sure which way it's going to go, but we'll see which way it works out. It seems the boards are the most practical and cheapest option, but we'll look towards it. If you have any opinion, let us know before the work is done, not after it is done, okay? Before the work's done, say something after that, finished. So the time to speak is before something happens. So we praise God on the progress, everything's happening, a lot of good comments about what's happening around about us, a lot of good comments, so praise God for that. All right, we're going to turn tonight to Epistle of James, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. James, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Just a little message on Christian beware. Christian beware. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Let's please bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word, for its instruction and guidance. It's food for our soul, and we praise you for it, Lord. It's our wisdom. Help us, Lord, to, to desire to understand your word, and most importantly, to apply it. We pray in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Looking at a, a warning over here to begin with, uh, James is going to start on a, a topic about the tongue. And this is like a, a classic part of the Bible. If you want to discuss the tongue in one chapter, go to James chapter 3. A lot of discussion in Proverbs, that's fine. A verse here, a verse there. But James chapter 3, that seems to nail the whole thing together. He's going to start off over here about those people who would be teachers. The word masters here is the Greek word teachers. So the question is, those who want to be teachers... Watch out. Matter of fact, it says, when it says, my, my master's been on many masters, my brethren been on many masters, what he's saying is, stop being teachers. Finish, finish. Stop being many teachers. Now, today, we're inundated on the uh, internet and stuff like that with people giving their opinions on different subjects under the sun, anything, from being from history, being from medicine, being theology, whatever it may be, everyone's giving their 10 cents worth. Who are they? Don't know. What's their background? Don't know. What's the qualification? Don't know. But everyone's saying something. You find the cults say something, other people say something. A lot of, lot of teaching comes from everywhere, but how do you know what's right what's wrong? Well, there are a lot of people declare themselves to be teachers. Well, you find that uh, today we have psychologists and psychiatrists and you have uh, counsellors, the galore. They, I mean, they're everywhere. But they don't seem to involve God in all their teaching. Now, they're teachers of the world but they don't involve God. These people are leading people astray by their so-called teaching. He said, listen, Christian, don't be like them. Be not many teachers. See, with the tongue, you can do so much good and with the tongue, so much evil. So, so much evil. Now, Proverbs, there's many passages, talks about the three things that God hates in uh, Proverbs 6. Out of seven things God hates, three have to do with the tongue. One is talking about a lying tongue. Another one's a false witness. Then there's that person who sows discord in the church. Gossip, 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 gossip. Sows discord. God hates that. It's, a, it's, a, it's a something from the tongue. We told it right, right through our Proverbs, many things over there. In Romans chapter 1, 28 to 32, 
It talks about whisperers, backbiters, boasters, deceitful, and they come from reprobate mind. In Romans 3, 13 to 14, you have those who, the Bible says, their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they've used deceit, the poison of aspies in their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Now, that's not a pretty tale, but here James is talking about the tongue as a whole, something that can do so much good and something that can do so much evil. And you've got to watch it. Now, none of us here are perfect. I'm sure each one of us have said things that we maybe later on repent about, which we wish we hadn't said it. But one thing about, about, about something we say, when you say something, you can't take it back. It's out there and it stays out there. No matter how much you apologise, repent, it's gone, it's been heard, that's it, it's done its job. In 1 Timothy 5.13, it talks about those lazy people who are tattlers, busybodies, busybodies speaking things they ought not. In Psalm 101 verse 5, those slanderers who go around with their tongue and they, with their, with their tongue, it's like a uh, cutting with a sword, very, very sharp and hurtful. And you have those people who, with their mouth, say some they don't even think about what they're saying. But God says plainly in Matthew chapter 12, it says, Christ said, I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So James is saying, you watch your words. You watch your words. Now, everyone, everyone, everyone should be a learner. And if you're a learner, amen. Keep on learning. We never ever stop learning. Never stop learning. And some people, God has given the express gift of area of teaching. The Bible says if, uh, if God's called you to be a bishop, that's a wonderful calling. And there's those people who are being called to be uh, pastors, evangelists, and uh, bishops, and uh, prophets, and uh, teachers. Wonderful, wonderful. And they're different gifts with different uh, measures of, uh, of God's grace upon them. Wonderful. But if God hasn't called you to be a teacher, sure you can be a witness. Sure you give your testimony, no problem. Sure you give your opinion, no problem. Never say, thus saith the Lord, unless you've got the Bible behind it. Always watch out. Never say, thus saith the Lord with the Bible. Because too many people, they read a little bit and they presume to know a whole lot. And that's dangerous. He, he, James is saying, stop being many teachers. Why? We will receive double condemnation. Now in this passage over here, you've got the warning. The warning is... Well, he's very, very plainly. He's not saying, I don't want you to preach the gospel. He's not saying that. I don't want you to disciple other people. No, he's not saying that. I don't want you to be a witness. No, he's not saying that. He's saying simply this. I don't want you to go around and give your opinions in lieu of God's word. I don't want you to do that. Because you can give your opinion no trouble. Just make sure what you're saying is the word of God. Because what happens then? Divisions, confusion, you find there's issues and trouble. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26, in the church at Corinth, though it never came behind any spiritual gift whatsoever. And then the Bible says over here, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, everyone has a psalm, everyone has a doctrine, everyone has a tongue, an interpretation, a revelation. Everyone's got something to say, but no one's got anything to listen to. They all want to be heard, all want to be seen, but no one wants to listen. Now, we find people... You say they have the gift of, a gift of uh, leaders and gift of teachers. If you, have, if, you the, if you don't have to give the following, you don't have the gift of teaching. You've got to be a learner first to be a teacher. You've got to be a follower to be a leader. And if you don't go and become the learner first or the follower first, you can't be a teacher. You can't be a, you can't be a leader. It's impossible. We have to be instructed first, then go ahead. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses uh, 5 to 7, Paul writes, now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and a faith unfeigned, from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. This is a fact. People want to be seen, they want to be heard, but they themselves don't understand what they're saying. They haven't gone that far in their study. That is, hear something and they run with it. This sounds good, run with it. You find people, they'll even go to Bible college and learn something and they go away and hear something different and run with something that's different. Why? It's different. Do they check it out? No. Do they, do check, do they find, they go do it very thoroughly? No. It just sounds different and they run with it. Then they go ahead and they teach that new doctrine they found. A thing about the cults, 
They master on minor issues. Very, very minor issue, they make it a master thing. And to them, that's the main thing to worry about. Well, the Bible tells it differently. A warning for teachers, stop being many teachers. Why is that? Because you will have the greater condemnation. Absolutely. Now you stop and think. Uh, when a person goes ahead and teaches, he tells someone something, they want to think, are you doing it yourself? That's the one, one of the first things I'll say. Are you doing it yourself? When you're teaching someone something and you're imparting the news to someone else, they think, well, you show me yourself how you're doing it. You show me yourself. If you can't show them, something's wrong. Now we go around to the book of Romans. And in Romans chapter 2, Here, is, uh, here we are. Verse 17. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest of things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light to them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth and the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest, a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest, a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit uh, sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed among Gentiles through you. Now, that is something that's very, very harmful. Those people who are taught and instructed and guided go ahead and don't do what they've been told. This is the Pharisees. We call them hypocrites. And the Pharisees are those who go around there laying heavy burdens upon people but not lifting one finger to fulfil them themselves. That is not right. You find a person who is a teacher must understand very plainly that there is a condemnation for the ministry he has. He has to watch out that he himself does the right thing. You have anyone who's uh, in the, let's say, professional world, um, those who are play, paid to, in the, I suppose, in the professional world to, to teach athletes and that, like a, uh, some sort of tennis trainer or something, he must himself not just know the theory of the game, but have practiced himself, had the experience in playing, even failing and stuff like that, knowing the ins and outs, then he finds himself a good teacher. But if he hasn't had to have the experience himself, Useless. It's like a person going to university, studying about a, getting a certain degree about a certain profession, and coming out. They'll give him a job, serving tea and coffee for the first 12 months to find out what work is like in the real life. Because just theory is not enough. Theory without practice is unproven theory. There must be practice. So God says to teachers, don't be many teachers. Why? Because you will receive double condemnation. Make sure you've tested what, you, what, you, what you're giving out. Make sure you understand what you're saying. Now with the Pharisees, the Bible says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Jesus Christ was the perfect teacher and he had disciples. Disciples are those people who come and listen to what's being said. So they hear what Christ is teaching. Then they observe his practice. They see what he's doing. And they see by his teaching is understood by his doing. If the teaching is one thing and practice is something different, there's confusion. But if the teaching and the practice go hand in hand, then there's learning. So God says to those who will be teachers, make sure you're a person who lives by what you say. And when you speak something, people understand what's going on because they can see it plain in your life. You should be aware of accountability. When we know something by God, he gives us something, some sort of gift, some sort of uh, uh, thing to use, we're responsible to use it. In the parable of the talents, God gave uh, these different servants, 10 talents, 5 talents, 2 talents, 1 talent, different situation, fine. They're responsible to use those things. So if you claim to be a teacher, let's see you use it properly. Let's see you go to God's word. Let's see you exposit God's word. 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says, um, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If we're going to be teaching people and telling people something, study, study. 
When you're discipling someone, you're a nice little book in front of you. Wonderful. It's a verse scripture. Wonderful. What's that verse say? What's that verse mean? Study. How can you teach someone else if you don't study yourself? So it's important. We put in the effort, and people who will not put the effort in study should not be teaching. They can witness, no problem. Share their faith, no problem. Give opinions, no problem. But teaching, no, no. First, go ahead and do the hard yards. In uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8, it's a wonderful passage over here. It's talking about the necessity to know what we're saying. In chapter 8, verse 8, in verse 7 it says um, that uh, these Levites caused the people to understand the law and the people stood in their place so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. They read it very, very, very clearly. They gave the sense of what was said and they gave the application, what it means. Now, Levites were those who were trained in the area of teaching the word of God they're the ones who used by like the scribes as well. They would write out the word of God completely. They knew what they were doing. And their job, read it very, very clearly. Give the sense very, very clearly. Now give the interpretation of it. It's not what I think, what the Bible says. And that's very important for any teacher to understand. What does the Bible say? That's what they're teaching. If you can't give what the Bible says, hold back. Hold back. Every person should realize I have a limit to my ability to teach. I might be good for teaching Sunday school kids. Perfect. That might be my level. Fantastic. Go for it, go for it, go for it. When it comes to adults, um, I don't really know the word of God that well. No worries. Stick with the Sunday school kids. Stick with them. No problem in the world. Understand your level. Understand your limitation and don't go beyond it. And if you're not sure about something, say, I'm not sure. When you go witnessing, someone asks you a question. If you're not sure, just say, I'm not sure. Don't propose to know something that you don't. Otherwise, you're falling yourself into the character of being, of being like a false witness, which is not very, very good. Our responsibility to listeners is to speak to them God's word, to build them up in the faith. Now, Ephesians chapter 4 gives us a beautiful passage here. 4 verse 11 to 16. The Bible says, And he, that's God, gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we find these different gifts are given to perfect people, to build them up, to strengthen them, to make them better servants, not to sway them this way or that way, or have them follow me or follow my opinion. No, 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 no. It's to build them up in the Lord, help them get established in the faith, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby the lion wait to deceive. So we're supposed to be building people up so they become independent of us, dependent upon the Lord, and they grow in the Lord. So if you can lead, if you can lead a person to read his Bible more, to study the Bible, you're a good teacher. If you just give facts, 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 it's like spoon feeding someone but not teaching them how to eat themselves. A proper teacher teaches people to think and to search for themselves. When you can think and search for yourself, you're less dependent upon the person, more dependent upon the Word of God. And that's the sign of a good teacher. Get them to go to God's Word themselves and find answers themselves. If you can't do that, you're not doing very good at all. Now, when it comes to laws of teaching, it's very important. We, teach, we do this in Sunday School Teacher Training. The person must know what he's talking about. Simple. He must know what he's talking about. Where from? The Bible, obviously. He must be someone who's able to motivate someone else to want to learn more, to make them think, to discover on their own. If they don't do that, they're making the person dependent, all the time dependent, completely dependent. That's wrong. In Bible college, what we try and do is train people up to get out there and study the Bible on their own, to learn God's Word on their own, to grow on their own and teach others to do the same thing. Never to come back and say, oh, excuse me, sir, excuse me, lecturer, what's this, what's that? No, no. Make them independent discoverers. That's the goal of a proper teacher. Now, on the chats and all the different things, you have the internet, you have people giving advice all the time and information all the time. 
And you don't really know how true is this? Can I believe? Can I believe that? You don't really know. There's no thus saith the Lord attached to it. And some of these cults, I put there a Bible verse over there, but it's out of context. So if you don't teach people to be able to search for themselves, they can be misled. That's a very sorrowful thing. I remember a long time ago when I was um, in Bible college, uh, I read a, a, a something by a certain cult. I won't, I won't give you the name of it. They're all the same. And this cult referred to a statement made by A.T. Robertson in his uh, word today is the Greek New Testament. And he said, uh, A.T. Robinson agrees on a certain teaching because see what, he's, well, see what he says over here? The teaching was definitely cultic. And I'm thinking, that's strange. That guy doesn't believe that story at all. So I went and got that book. I found the, the volume, volume number, the page number, I read it over there. And they completely got out of context. He was saying, uh, the, you talk about the Greek passage, he said, the Greek passage does not say, then bang, 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 bang. Well, they quoted... What he said, it does not say, as if it did say that. I think, you deceivers. But if you don't study, you don't find out. You can just take what's being said at surface level and share it with somebody else to be in trouble. So it's very important. It's very important. If we want to be a teacher, you've got to be a studier. Very important. The purpose of the warning is in verse 2. He says over here, James verse 2. For in many things we offend all. Now we find here that James refers to himself too. We, that's me included, we offend all. In many things we offend all. It's impossible, it's impossible to, for us people who have a sinful nature not to make a mistake somewhere. It's, not, it's, it's very, very impossible. So in many, many, many ways we can do our best, our best, our best to do the right thing but... We offend. So you say sorry, sorry, sorry. That's fine. An honest person, no problem in saying sorry. An honest person, no problem admitting his, his faults. There's no problem at all. But it should not be something that labels us as false teachers. It shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be something where people think, I'm sorry, this guy's deaf to the faith, he's teaching error. It shouldn't be that. We can give a wrong understanding here or there because we, maybe we heard something wrong. But we later realise, oh, mate, that's wrong. I apologise. That that's not not correct. But it should not be something where people put us down as a false teacher with a false doctrine. In many things we offend all. But the Bible says here, if any man not offend in word, the same is a perfect man. Now when it says here, if any man offend not, it's given in the first class condition meaning that people don't offend. There are people who do not offend in all. That person is mature. That person has a bridle his whole, whole body. As someone who studies first, who is very cautious, who does not go ahead and say things he doesn't know, who uses the word of God properly and quotes the scripture, that person is li likely to offend anyone or say anything wrong. Why? Because he's using the word of God. You can't fail by using God's word. Because if you use it out of context and say, excuse me, what about this, this, and this? You think, oh yeah, you're right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Use the scripture and you can't offend. It's impossible. It's impossible. So James is trying to tell us very, very plainly. When it comes to the tongue, <clears throat> there are many things we do to make error. When it comes to the tongue, we can sin like anything. And the rest of the chapter is going to show that. It's a very, very powerful tool. The Bible says in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Satan uses words to get us to go astray, to turn from God and fall flat in our faces. And people can use words simply without thinking, cutting, criticising, back, uh, uh, tail-bearing, backbiting in such a way they destroy a person. And people can be call themselves teachers in such a way as to turn them away from churches, turn them away from the truth, because they're those people who do not properly study the word of God. So it says, stop being many teachers. Why? In many things we offend all. And if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and also able to bridle the whole body. So it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that if we're able to get to the point where we say, thus saith the Lord. Now, one thing I want to notice over here before I finish. Uh, if any man offend not in word, the word man over here is not the general word for man in the Bible. It's the word for male. If any male offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. So we're talking about here as men being teachers. 
if the whole onus is on men being teachers, male teachers. So regarding men who are the leaders in their homes and men who should be the leaders in the area of teaching, watch out. Sure, you're the head of your home. That's fine. And sure, you have authority in your home. That's fine. And sure, you lead your family. Wonderful news. But watch out when it comes to outside your family, when it comes to church. Make sure you use the word of God. Make sure that's for your benefit and for their benefit too. And by the way, <clears throat> as you use God's word, all you do is grow and grow and grow and grow. That's all you do. If you don't use the word of God, your opinion, your opinion, your opinion. So in the beginning of this section, we talked about the use of the tongue and the sins of the tongue. My brethren, stop being many teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Let's please bow for prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for this opportunity to begin this series. Near the tongue, help us to contemplate the danger of being someone who proposes to be something we're not. To go out there and try and get followers, Lord, be their followers because for some reason other than what you'd have us to do, help us, Lord, to be those who hide behind the cross of Jesus Christ and speak as prophets of Christ. You give us something to say, we say it. Help us, Lord, to be those people who represent Jesus Christ, represent your word, not our own opinions. And give us a grace to want to be able to direct people to the Lord and not to ourselves. We thank you, Father, your word and for its admonitions and for its warnings. In Christ's name we thank you and pray. Amen.